This is Pastor Seth Perry from St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Kingston, Ontario. Today we're going to speak with two recent seminary graduates from Lutheran Theological Seminary in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. We're going to talk about how COVID-19 is affecting graduation and their first call process in which they are looking for the first congregation that will ever ordain them as pastors. We're talking with Aaron Thomas and Kate Zeiser, two students who have just finished their Master of Divinity. You finish seminary after studying all these years, and then you are uh, going out into what's called your call because it is a vocation and it is not a regular job. It is not just a career. We call it a vocation, which you've had an expectation of what it would be like. So what did you think it was gonna be like? and now things might be different because of COVID-19. So tell us your experience right now as you're finishing seminary. You know, a lot of things are, are up in the air and I suspect it's that way for a lot of seminary graduates, for a lot of pastors that are looking for calls, for a lot of churches that are looking for pastors. Um, councils can't meet in person. Uh, everyone has to meet by Zoom. Um, you know, one of the, the steps in the call process is to get congregational feedback so congregations right now have to get feedback sort of one-on-one, -on -one, not through meetings or group sessions or anything like that, which can make gathering feedback um, a little bit more tricky. Uh, finances are always on the table in terms of the call process and how much uh, congregations can reasonably afford. Uh, but in terms of COVID-19 and depending on what the um, giving is like at any particular congregation, you know, the question is there, can we afford a pastor right now? Can we afford a full-time pastor? Can we afford a part-time pastor? So there are a lot of unknowns right now with the COVID-19 crisis. People aren't really looking for jobs and getting hired really right now. Let's be honest, since March 15th, I don't think it would be easy to find a job in, in any sector right now. So graduates would be concerned about finding employment uh, anywhere, right? Um, and you mentioned the reluctancy to, uh, to put finances into new human resources. Uh, that's something that a church would, would be challenged with because people just simply aren't hiring. It's a good time to get into the grocery business, but uh, maybe not the best time to get into the pastoring business. Who knows, we'll see through this summer. Like Aaron, at the beginning of March, I passed colloquy, so that's the national church examination that determine, that recommends that I be recommended to be ordained. And at that time, I spoke to my bishop, and he identified some congregations that were thinking about calling a pastor in the next, in the coming months. And then two weeks later, March 15th, pandemic arrives in our area. And to be honest, I haven't really heard much about what's changing about the process. It, it is a drawn out process um, at the best of times. And right now I, I expect that it'll be even slower. A large part of that process is like, well, applying for a job, you wanna meet the people, you want to get to know them, get a sense of the place, get a sense of the people. And right now, all of that will have to be done by Zoom, which is initially okay, but eventually you want to meet people face to face. I walked into the process myself last year uh, in seeking my first call, knowing that uh, it, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be like a, a regular interview where I would apply and maybe find out in a month if I have the position or not. This could be, be uh, a long and uh, a long dragged out process and I applied initially for my first calls in March and I started in Thanksgiving right so yeah for some for some people both uh, west and uh, east in both parts of our country the two different uh, 
institutions that are creating pastors in the ELCIC, I think it's important for people in our congregations to know that, uh, yeah, October, maybe January, maybe next spring. So there might be some new pastors that are faced with some, uh, some challenges in finding, uh, in finding income in the next little while. So there's no celebration, there's no big worship service, there's no big convocation. It is a big party in Saskatoon. It is a big moment where a lot of people can see each other for the last time together for a while until maybe you see someone at different church conventions here and there. So I'll ask Kate this first. Um, you're gonna miss out on it this year. What has that experience been like? Well, as we're speaking, probably the baccalaureate surface right now, which is a large um, church service to celebrate and give thanks for our graduation. And this evening was to be our convocation, the, um, the academic graduation ceremony. And in mid-March, we, we found out that that would be postponed until the fall. and about two weeks ago, so mid-April, we were told that that was being postponed till next spring. Uh, so that's a big difference. I was okay with being postponed to the fall, but waiting till next spring is a really long time. And my fear is that not all of us will be able to attend our convocation. Um, like, say with you, Seth, you got called to a congregation in a another part of the country, it wouldn't be possible for you to come back to a convocation a year after you graduated once you're in a call. Tonight we are doing a Zoom grad party just to try to see everyone and say our goodbyes and thank yous and it'll be another Zoom meeting and I think a lot of people are Zoomed out anyway. So. You use the term zoomed out and a lot of people are. I'm noticing a lot of people are tired of staring into the screen. A lot of people have just, in the last two weeks, I've noticed less and less real engagement when someone is, is watching a Zoom. I think that uh, it's no replacement for a party. And uh, I don't, when you mention this, people might be listening to this and thinking, oh, but these are seminary students. They can't really, they don't really have fun or relax uh, in the way that normal people do because they're gonna be pastors. I don't think they've ever been around a, a group of us, uh, you know, on a weekend. Uh, so uh, Aaron, tell us, tell us what you're gonna miss and what it's like to party and celebrate with people in seminary. I think it's really important to remember that seminary students, we aren't just learning academic theology. We need to learn how to walk with one another in community and do a lot of self-work um, with a lot of stuff that comes into our lives. And so that includes confiding in, your, in our classmates, in, in the relationships that we develop at seminary. Uh, includes uh, learning from the lives and experiences of our prof professors who have also been pastors. And all of these things develops a, a camaraderie, um, levels of trust, uh, all of which really deserve to be uh, honored and celebrated at the end of it all. Because a lot of this stuff, it's just as hard, if not harder, than the academic part. I mean, this is life stuff that happens to everybody, and we need to learn to be able to walk through that together. Um, so to be able to, um, you know, I don't know, be in the kitchen with you, Seth, and, you know, cook a great big meal together, like that's really special. Um, not only breaking bread together, but being able to contribute to community meals was always a, a great and grand thing. Uh, we all had our favorite restaurants in Saskatoon, uh, Temperance Cafe, which sadly is closed down, uh, but it was a really good place for homemade Chinese food. I know that was a, a really special spot for dumplings. Um, you know, places like that where um, we would hang out, we would uh, laugh a lot, we would reflect on, you know, things that we had come through, reflect on um, the dreams we have going forward. Uh, all of these really important, um, meaningful milestones that we would share together. On top of which, 
is all the grief of um, leaving the building. So, I mean, this was going to be a really special year, not just in terms of grad, but in terms of the whole staff and faculty and alumni um, walking through the process of being grateful for the beautiful building that we've been in for so long. So it's like a really heavy double whammy. The graduation's not happening, the baccalaureate's not happening. But I think we can all can recall some really amazing memories we've all made in places like the chapel, our beautiful chapel. Are any of us really gonna be able to go back into that space to say goodbye? And that's a question that's really up in the air right now. So when there's a lot of, um, you know, anticipatory grief and, and kind of undisclosed grief. It just, it makes it a really difficult time of year to go through. When we're there uh, gathering for classes, we're in that chapel five times, uh, at least five times a, a week worshiping together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, yeah, we, we didn't get a chance to have that graduation service in there, the baccalaureate service. And we don't, so you, it, it's up in the air. We don't know because the building is going to be transferring ownership soon. Seminary life kind of puts obstacles in, in your, your path anyway. It's supposed to be a time in which you're discerning what's going to be happening in your future. Seminary is a time where it will, you know, people say it, it is not an easy experience. You're learning a lot about yourself. You're being tested. Uh, it's a, uh, for many people, it's difficult already to just go through that process, which is a minimum four year process to complete your master's degree. But uh, for you guys, since March, this has been in the way and there are currently students who are in their first year, second year, third year, and are currently in their internship. So Kate, uh, wanna, wanna take a crack at this question about what you see being uh, added stressors and difficulties in the life of seminarians? If you haven't been to seminary or known a seminarian in the last six years, um, seminary at Lutheran Theological Seminary Saskatoon looks a lot different than it used to. We, it's a primarily distance-based campus, so for the first two years or of full-time studies, or for some people three, four years, you, half your classes are intensive online in a synchronous meeting like a Zoom call. And the other half of your classes, you travel to Saskatoon for two weeks at a time to take those classes. And then in your, over your internship years, the third and fourth years, while you are doing an internship at a parish, you return a couple times a year to do one week intensive courses at the seminary. So in terms of affecting us as graduates, after, at March 15th, when the pandemic broke in our region, we only had one class remaining and that was meant to be one week in person at the seminary. And that class was moved online, which isn't a huge shift since a lot of our classes are online anyway. However, what I really noticed in this last capstone course was how challenging it was not having all the faculty be in one building. Um, so normally, if they have a question for each other, it's very easy for them to go over to the next office and straighten things out. And during this year for our capstone, all being in our own homes, it was very confused. And I already mentioned people being zoomed out and not quite focusing on the meeting as well as we might, as well as we do in person. I think we're all struggling to build and maintain in-person connection right now in all areas of life, not just in education, but the reality that we have shifted towards distance-based education is really gonna help LTS um, in planning for the future, especially when you know, all organizations and communities have to really be thinking about you know, second, third wave of, of the pandemic and what that might mean until there's a vaccine. So, for students that are, are already in 
um, seminary, it may mean, you know, adjusting to maybe not being on campus as much, but relying on the experiences that we've all already had in, in distance classes and using those tools even more effectively to everyone's benefit. With all this talk about the pandemic, uh, forcing the church online, uh, how do you see this changing the church for the good for the future? Been having ongoing conversations about how the church needs to be in the 21st century. And my hope is that this will um, compel congregations to seriously look at how church can exist in community, how church can exist as community uh, outside of uh, a bricks and mortar building out, outside of um, physical infrastructure. Uh, not just because of the pandemic, um, but because of the needs that get exposed during times of crises. You know, the, the levels of inequality in our systems and the ways that the church not only needs to be um, accountable for being part of those systems and upholding those systems, but for the many, many gifts that we bring um, that help us to be able to dismantle those systems. How many times have you heard, we've always done it this way, why would we change it? And today, what we have always, always done, we can no longer do during the pandemic with physical distancing restrictions and limits on the number of people in a gathering. So I think that we've already seen how the pandemic is driving change and innovation in congregations. We are figuring out how do we worship together apart and asking questions like, what does loving your neighbor look like right now? And it doesn't look like it has before. Um, what does it look like to let your light shine and not hide it under a bushel during a pandemic? And my hope is that churches will struggle with that and experiment with different answers and even when the pandemic is over that we will be able to discern what was really good what changes do we hang on to into the future and what traditions from before the pandemic do we also hold on to and what can we maybe change